Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Cisco Meraki Go. The Cisco Meraki Go is a subscriptionless SDN, which I feel is trying to compete against Aruba Instant On and Unify Network. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button, make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon store and I'll put it in the description below. So one thing I already don't like about Meraki Go off the top is you need to configure it by your mobile phone. I would prefer to do all the configuration from my computer where I have a bigger screen. But let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware that I purchased. The first piece of Cisco gear that we're going to take a look at is the Cisco Meraki GR10-HWUS access point. So this is what comes in the box. We have a access point and then we have our 12 volt adapter. We have some mounting screws and anchors and then we have the mounting bracket. On the mounting bracket we have this piece of paper for differing mounting positions. On the back of the access point we have our holes for our mounting bracket. And then we have a one gigabit interface, which is PoE. Beside that, we have where we would put the 12 volt adapter into. This access point is a dual band 802.11 AC Wave 2 2x2 multi-user MIMO. Next up, we have our Meraki Go 8 port PoE network switch. The model number is GS110-8P-HW. On the top, we have eight RJ45 one gigabit PoE ports, which support PoE and PoE++. Then we have two SFP ports, which are one gigabit. We have a reset button on the front. On the back, we have a Kensington lock and then our power adapter port. The switching capacity is 20 gigabits per second and the available PoE power is 67 watts. This supports 802.1p QoS 8Qs, 802.1q VLAN and trunking up to 4,094 VLANs. It also supports rapid spanning tree, spanning tree 802.1ab LLDP and CDP. Last up, we have our Cisco Meraki Go 5 port security gateway. The model number is GX20-HW. It comes with a 54 volt power supply two thin ethernet cables, and then some mounting gear. On the front, we have one WAN port, and then we have four LAN ports. And this last port is capable of PoE 802.3AF. We have a USB port, and then we have a reset button. On the end, we have our power supply. This is a stateful firewall with features of port forwarding, DHCP services up to 250 megabits per second throughput. And if we wanted extra security features, we would have to pay for a subscription for content filtering, anti-malware, anti-phishing, command and control callbacks, single tap security configuration. Now that we've seen the hardware that we'll be working with, we need to get this into our Meraki Go account. So what we need to do, we need to either register for an account or if you already have an account, sign in with your email and password. And I've created an account, so I'm gonna sign in. Okay, now we're on the dashboard and we could see all networks. We could see devices, which there are no devices because we haven't added any hardware and we could see applications. Under hardware, we could see the red warning icon. So let's add hardware. To add the hardware, we need to scan the QR code on the back of each piece of equipment. So we'll start with the switch. And now the hardware has successfully added, I'm gonna name it, and I'm gonna name it eight port switch. Now that our switch has been added, we're gonna go ahead and add our access point. So now it's asking us for a name for the wireless. I'm just gonna call it AP and then press save. And the last thing we need to add is our security gateway. And the hardware successfully added, I'll press name it, and I'm gonna call this firewall, and then press save. Now we're gonna select next review scanned hardware. And we can see that we have our eight port switch, our AP and our firewall, and they're ready to be plugged in. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna plug them all into power. All right, now we have everything plugged in. I'm gonna press next plug in hardware. And this is just gonna show us steps of how to plug everything in. So our security gateway is gonna be plugging into our ISP. Our switch will be connected into our security gateway. And then our access point is going to be connected into our switch and I'll press next finish setup. It says, congratulations, your setup is complete and I'll press finish. Now we have all our devices connected to power, connected to my WAN connection and connected to each other. So let's go ahead and look at the hardware. We can see that our firewall, our eight port switch and our AP are all online. And we have a color code system for what's happening with the devices. So green means active, green with a white dot means that it's active and it's meshed together. 
Yellow means it's upgrading and red means it's alerting. If it's gray, it means the device is offline. And we could refresh our hardware list by pulling down on our phone and then letting go. Now let's take a look at our firewall. Here we could see the MAC address and the WAN IP address, and then we could see a security protection. This security protection is the malware phishing, content filtering, and command and control callbacks. We only could use these if we had the Meraki Go security subscription, which I'm not gonna pay for. Below that, we could see our ports, and we could see that we have two active ports. We have our internet connection, which it's saying type uplink and the link speed is one gigabit per second. And then we have our LAN port, which is port two. So this type is LAN access and it's also running at one gigabit per second. We could take a look at the settings and here we could enable or disable the port and then we have advanced settings. Under VLAN, this LAN port is gonna act as a trunk and it's in trunk mode right now, but we could have it set for a native VLAN and then we could have an allowed VLAN list. Right now it's set to all. If we scroll down, we have some troubleshooting tools. So we have test connection, blink the LED, which would blink the LED on the security gateway, and then we could reboot the device. Under product information, we have the model number, we have the serial number, the MAC address, the WAN IP, and then the public WAN IP. We also have the firmware version that it's currently running at. And at the bottom, if we wanted to get rid of this, we could delete it. Next, let's take a look at our eight port switch. Here again, we could see the MAC address and the IP address of the switch. Under devices, we could see high usage devices and unique devices. Below that, we could see the active port. So we have two active ports and zero are alerting ports. Now I'll click on see all ports. Here we could tell on port two that the AP is connected because that's the name I gave it, which was AP. And then under port eight, it's saying internet connection. This is what's plugged into my security gateway. If we click on settings, we could edit a port. So we'll edit port three and then press settings. Here we could turn the port on or off. We could turn off or on the PoE. And then we could set the link speed. Right now it's set to auto negotiate. We could also set the VLAN configuration. Right now it's in trunk mode, but we're gonna wanna specify that to be on a certain VLAN. And we'll create a few networks after we look at the settings. Lastly, we could take a look at our access point. And here it's giving us our MAC address and our IP address. It's showing us our unique device, which is Cody's iPhone, which is my iPhone that I had connected to it. If we click on Cody's iPhone, we could see some statistics. So we would be able to see signal strength. I'm not connected to it right now. And you could also see when this device was last seen by the access point. We have our usage summary for this client. And then it shows us the application usage. We could see non-web TCP. We could see YouTube. We could see UDP. We could see Twitter, um, miscellaneous secure web, Snapchat, encrypted P2P, Google HTTPS, iCloud, iTunes, and Facebook. We could take a look at the radio settings and we could change the settings for the 2.4 and the five gigahertz band. By default, they're both just set on auto. So the channel's set on auto and the target power is set on auto. On the five gigahertz band, we could change the channel, the channel width and the power. If we scroll down under product information, it's gonna give us the model of the access point, the serial number, the MAC address, the LAN IP, the public address and the channels that they're working on. So on the 2.5 gigahertz, it's on channel 11 and on the five gigahertz, it's on channel 56. And we can see that we're running firmware version 27.6. For the firewall, if we had a static IP, we would need to change that. So we click on our firewall and then we click on the edit pencil beside our IP address. Here we could select either DHCP or static IP. If we put static IP in, we could put a VLAN, IP address, subnet mask, gateway, primary and secondary DNS. Right now I'm just running on DHCP, so we're gonna leave it as is. Under the settings wheel, we have features. It shows us what's new and we could view documentation. Under access, we could view Wi-Fi network guest insights and block clients. Usage and speed, we could do web blocking and usage limits. So if we wanted to limit a guest Wi-Fi network to a specific bandwidth limit, we could do that there. Under account, we could enable face authentication if we want, and we could set time zones, language, and change organization name. And this is where we would log out as well. Under admins, this is where we would specify who we'd want to be able to control the configuration on this. Right now, we just have myself. So now let's go ahead and create a wired network. So if we go over to networks and then press the plus button, it will ask us which type of network do you wanna create, a wireless or a wired network? We're gonna select wired. Here we could give it a name and I'm gonna call it staff. And then we could give it a subnet. So we'll have it at 192.168.222.1 with the subnet mask of slash 24. The VLAN ID we'll give this is 222. 
and we're not going to secure this network. Secure this network if enabled, the option will automatically create firewall rules to block all traffic to or from the local network. This does not block connections to the internet and helps prevent guests on other networks from accessing sensitive devices. Now that the wired network is created, if we wanted to specify a certain DNS settings that this wired network gets, we could do that. So we would click on settings and then we'd press local network addressing. Here we could see the new staff network that was created and we could press edit. Then we could change the local IP addressing space, which we're not gonna do, and we could enable and disable DHCP. Below that, we could see change DNS server. The first option, which is default, is the upstream DNS, but we could use Google DNS, Open DNS, or we could use a custom DNS and we could specify that. Now, if we have some ports that need to be connected to the staff network on our switch, we could do that. So we'll click on hardware and then we'll go to our eight port switch. If we click see all ports, we're gonna edit port three. We're gonna click on settings and then advanced. And under VLAN configuration, we're gonna make this an access port. And then we're gonna give it VLAN 222 and press done. So now if I plug my computer or any other device into port three on that switch, we're gonna get an IP out of 192.168.222.x24. Let's go ahead and create a wireless network. So if we press the plus button, we're gonna to wanna to select wireless network. And at the top, the network name, this is our SSID. I'm gonna call it staff. And then we need to set a password and I'm just gonna leave it at test1234. Below, if this is a guest network, it will prevent devices from interacting with the rest of your networks. And this one isn't, so we'll press save. Under our staff network, we could do some more advanced options. So here we could share the Wi-Fi network if we wanted and it would give us a QR code. We could show the password, which is just test1234, and it will show us the devices that are connected to it. If we click on settings, we could see our access control where we could change our password and then we have a landing page section. This landing page, we could have none, which would give us direct access. We could have click through or we could have externally hosted. Click through would be like a captive portal. Externally hosted, if we wanted to set this up, when someone connects to this Wi-Fi network, it would push them to the website that was specified. Here we could do our web blocking and our usage limits. And then we could turn on or off the network. We could turn on or off the guest network. And then discoverability, we could turn on or off the SSID. If we click on advanced, we could see the wireless address translation mode. And right now it's in bridge and we could look at the radio settings. So the radio settings right now, this SSID has both dual band in operation. So we have our five gigahertz and our 2.4, but if we only wanted it to operate on one or the other, we could specify that. Below that, we could have VLAN tagging. And since this is the staff network, we wanna have it on VLAN 222. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into VLAN 222 and press save. Now I'm connected to that new staff network that we created and you can see the IP address that I'm getting is 192.168.222.2 with the subnet mask of slash 24 and then an IP of the router of 192.168.222.1. Let's go ahead and do a speed test. The access point is sitting right beside me. I'll do another speed test down in my main floor and then one in the basement. And right beside the access point, we're getting 390 megabits per second down and 251 up. My connection is one gig by one gig. I'm gonna go downstairs, do a speed test from the main floor and one from the basement. Okay, so here was the speed capture from my main floor, which is one floor away from the access point. And we're getting 294 megabits per second down and 129 up. Let's go ahead and check the basement. In the basement, which is two floors below, we are getting 96.9 down and 26.1 up. So that's pretty good for this access point. Since we didn't click that guest policy rule, we're still able to ping the main LAN gateway. As you can see, the ICMPs are going out. I'm not too sure where in this app or if you can go in and change firewall rules. That's one thing that I think they're lacking and hopefully I'm just wrong and haven't used this product enough to know where it is. Now I'm gonna create another wireless network that has those guest policies and we'll see if we could still reach the gateway of the other network. And we'll select wireless network and we'll call this guest. We'll give it a password of test1234 and then we'll specify that it's a guest network and press save. Now I'm connected to that newly created guest network and what's interesting, it automatically creates a new network for us. 
So if we click on the information button, we can now see my IP address is 10.121.5.235. This is giving us a full class A. Let's see if we could ping any other subnet. So now I'm going to try to ping the gateway of 192.168.222.1. And we could see that the requests are timing out, so the guest policies do work. One thing I found interesting, if we go to our IP address of our gateway, we're able to see the security appliance. So if I type in 192.168.222.1, we're able to get to the Cisco Meraki security appliance. From here, we could do a few things. We could run a speed test. We could see the client IP address and then we could configure. So pretty much if a client was connected to the network and they didn't have those guest policies on, they could reach your gateway. And then we could do VLAN tagging and we could change our connection types. We'd also look at the ethernet and change if they're enabled or disabled and what speeds they're going on. Down here it says the security appliance is successfully connected to the internet. We could click on the Cisco Meraki cloud and then it's gonna get us to log in. But once we're logged in, it's saying that we have to do all the configuration from our mobile app. And the only thing I needed to get into the Cisco security appliance was the serial number, that's the default username, and then the password was blank and press enter. So I don't know if this is something that's overlooked or if you could change the username and password on this so that nobody could gain access. One last thing I wanna go over before we end this video, I forgot at the beginning to show the prices of the devices. So the Cisco Meraki security gateway is $183 MSRP Canadian. The Meraki access point is $147 MSRP Canadian and the eight port PoE switch is $315. So do I think this competes against other vendors like Ubiquiti? I think it's a decent product, but has ways to go. I really don't like doing full configuration for my phone and I couldn't figure out where I would go and set firewall rules. If any of you have used Meraki Go, I would love to hear what you think about it. If you guys have a question or comment about this video, please leave it below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.